All right, the ancient Maya are credited with creating the most sophisticated hieroglyphs in Mesoamerica, which consists of a pictorial or a glyph, which is an image that represents either an entire word or syllables. It's the only pre-Hispanic writing system in Mesoamerica that's largely been deciphered and we're able to understand it today. Additionally, the Maya recorded the movements of the sun, the moon, and several planets and designed an accurate calendar system that is in use today. With a popular, popu excuse me, with a population ranging in the millions and scattered throughout a huge region, the Maya were organized into small city-states and ruled by divine lord who controlled territory and frequently fought with neighboring states for dominance. I mean, they weren't as um, warrior-like as the Aztecs, but certainly uh, wanted dominance in their area. Different from the Aztecs, however, who centralized power, Maya remained decentralized and would spread throughout numerous kingdoms, in part because of the remoteness of their areas, the city, the Mayan cities, as well as the diverse geographies. I mean, some areas were high and mountainous, while others were low in the forest, the rainforest. The Maya represented their rulers in their art rather than their gods and recognized the ruler's achievements in their texts, which was different from other cultures as well. Bloodletting was an essential part of Mayan culture and part of the public ritual. The collapse of the Mayan cities in the 10th century is not fully understood, but may have resulted from the climate change due to the drought and crop failures, overpopulation, and political unrest. I want to briefly talk about this lintel because this is 24, which precedes 25, and 25 is the one that you need to know. So this is Shield Jaguar, who is the king at the time. And this is his wife, Lady Jacques. And what she is doing is she is um, bloodletting, which, as I've already said, is essential to keeping the balance of this. They, they believed that they had to feed the sun god, and they believed this was part of the royal, um, it was part of their job to do this bloodletting, to uh, give blood. And so what she is doing, she is pulling a string, and you can see it's laying in the basket here, and she is pulling it through her tongue, and on the string is little shards of either shark blade or obsidian, something very, very sharp. And she, so there's a hole in her tongue and she's pulling it through. And this is creating, obviously, lots of blood. Down here is a basket, which is where, partly where the rope is hanging and also where there's some paper that is, she's using to wipe off the blood. Because you can see here on the side are these, um, I'm not even sure what they call them, but they're, they're there so she can collect the blood. And then she later burns those papers, which helps to create like a hallucination, and which creates the next lintel that we're going to talk about and the one you need to know. Here on the sides and above, this is the glyphs that I'm talking about. So this is their actual writing, their images, and their actually words together. And then here, this is a, um, a flame, you know, like a torch that her husband is holding above her head. want you to look at what they're wearing, which is really quite elaborate. It's difficult to see now because this would all have been very painted brightly in bright colors, you know, turquoise and red and blues. And you can see her head, um, headwear is very elaborate and so is his. And all of the different jewels and things hanging off of them. This was a very elaborate ceremony. So we're going to move into uh, Chiapas, Yachilian. So these lintels would have been placed above, inside these temples, above the door. So this is images of power. And Yachilian was only discovered in the 19th century, so it stood in this tropical rainforest and was completely covered by trees. And so the Mayan glyphs uh, only began to be translated in 1960. Because they still speak this language, we're able to know exactly what's going on. 
It was very significant center of most impressive buildings and sculptures in Mesoamerica uh, that were created during the time. The monuments and objects uncovered at Yeshilian are numbered in order, so it's confusing because, um, for instance, this is number 33, I think. Yes, number 33. And the next one is 40. So it was based on when they were discovered, not the amount of importance. The numbers are not relevant to the importance of the buildings, but to when they were actually discovered in the series of things that were discovered. So lintel one is not the oldest, um, or not the most important, but just the first to be excavated. Many of the exterior and elaborate decorations from structure 33 with a decorative frieze, which is here along the edge there. There's niches up here at the top there and other sculptural elements, along with the roof comb, which is this element here that is intended to make the temple look taller. Structural 33 rests on the side of the, um, the main plaza, which was the center of the civic fo focus and was the focal, uh, focal point of this whole um, area. The building is narrow, and it was not intended to hold many people. It was intended for ceremonies, such as we're talking about in these lintels. There's three entryways, um, punctured by, punctuated by the exterior, and uh, again, the roof comb that's on the top, which just, again, accentuates its height and also makes it look pretty cool. Roof combs were ornamental stone tops placed on the roof that gave the impression that the building was much taller than it actually was. And you can see from the map where this is actually located within the city. This is 33, 40, 40 is the other temple that you need to know about. And you also need to know about the structure and how they were built using corbelled arches, which is really important that you understand the difference between a corbelled arch, which is what this is, and so you're building up stones here, one, two, three, four, and then you're coming in, and here again, you're building them up this way, and you're coming in to be able to build an arch in this triangular form, which is very different from a Roman arch, which has the keystone and all the voiciers around. Other cultures use the corbel arch, but this is the, this is the culture that used it in Mesoamerica.